Let my mouth be filled with your praise, that I may sing aloud. My lips shout for joy when I sing to you. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather together today and continue our celebration of this Easter season, we also celebrate today the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. And in this month of May, when we ask for the Blessed Mother's special intercession, we turn to her particularly today under that title. And as we prepare now to enter into our worship together, let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose the mother of your Son to be our mother also, grant us that persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may further more effectively each day the reign of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who came down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles, and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church, as well as by the apostles and presbyters, and they reported what God had done with them. But some from the party of the Pharisees who had become believers stood up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and presbyters met together to see about this matter. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, 
whatever remains in me will bear much fruit. Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I remain in you, just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, continuing to read today from the Acts of the Apostles, uh, we hear that as the early church community continues to grow in different parts and regions of the world, that more and more Gentiles are becoming Christian and being baptized. And as we've heard, um, a great discussion arises among the members of the church, including even the apostles and the presbyters and those who have been sent out as missionaries, and even those who themselves have embraced the faith, that particularly in relationship to the Gentile Christians, should they in essence first become Jewish and then be baptized and become Christian? Or another way of saying it is, should they embrace particularly the kosher laws and the covenant of the Mosaic law uh, while they embrace Christianity? And of course, what we see today happening is something very important, not only historically, but what we might say ecclesiastically or relating to the church and its governance. We see that Paul and Barnabas go back to the apostles because they recognize that there is beginning to be possibly division within the early church over this matter. And so they go back to the apostles and the presbyters in Jerusalem to enter into a dialogue with them and to glean an instruction and a mandate on how they should move forward. And this shows us not only Paul and Barnabas' deference to the College of the Apostles or the First Bishops, but it really gives us a very important insight into the very, very early governance of the church, that it is clear that the Christians understood and believed the mandate of Jesus, that he left the apostles as his successors uh, to govern the day-to-day -day activities of the church under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so we see Paul and Barnabas not only respecting that, but in an attempt to pr preserve unity and to bring about conformity and to be consistent, they go back. Well, it's sort of like a good mini-series. It leads us at the end today with sort of an exciting end that doesn't really tell us the whole story. It says the apostles and presbyters met together to see about this matter. We're going to hear a little bit more about what goes on in the dialogue among the apostles. But what we see here is what we often refer to as the first council of the church, the council of Jerusalem. And it is that council that brings together the leaders of the church under the inspiration again of the Holy Spirit to decide these matters. These matters that particularly may not have been directly addressed by Jesus in the time of his public ministry and matters that come about in the normal uh, everyday administration uh, and workings of this new community of faith. And so through prayer and through reflection and through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, 
they will indeed come to a decision for the entire church. And I think as we hear the gospel today, uh, Jesus reminds us that he is the true vine and the Father is the vine grower. We are connected together, and that unity is very important. Not only the unity in what we believe, but the unity in how we practice our belief and our common unity or our communion with each other, which is exemplified and preeminent in the sacrament of the Eucharist, in communion itself. And that is why the Eucharist is so many things, but one of the things that the Eucharist is, is that sign and celebration of our common unity in Christ and with each other. And if you notice, every day as we pray, whether it's the prayers of the faithful, the preface of the Mass, even some of the prayers of the Roman Missal in the Collect, or the prayer over the gifts, or the prayer at the end of Mass, we often hear that prayer for unity. Uh, it is so important because it is the prayer that Christ prayed for his church before he died, rose, and ascended into heaven. And so, indeed, like Jesus tells us, anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. And so we are reminded how important that unity is. Today we commemorate also the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. And we know this very important apparition of Our Lady of Fatima in 1917 to the three children of Portugal, and how this important apparition was really about the conversion of the world and the conversion of one's heart, and the recognition of the gift of salvation and also the possibility of damnation. And I think so many times today we don't think about damnation like we used to, but it reminds us that when we are separated from God, when there is disunity, there is more opportunity for sin to enter into our hearts. When we think about what damnation is, I think one of the most simplest but most poignant explanations of it is it is perpetual separation from God. And however we see that or deem that, we know that that is not life-giving, we know that it is not joyful, we know that it is not life-sustaining. It is darkness, not light. It is despair, not hope. It is um, anxiety, not joy. So my dear friends, especially in this month of May, which we dedicate especially to the Blessed Mother, and on this feast of Our Lady of Fatima, let us pray to Our Lady under her title of Our Lady of Fatima and ask her to help us in our present time, in our present age, to help our families, and that in every age that we may take the signs of the times as wonderful opportunities to recommit ourselves to the faith and great opportunities for conversion. And as we're in the challenges of this present time, we can look at all of the many things that are difficult and even tragic and horrifying, but we also can see it as people of faith as great opportunities to realign our priorities, to reinvigorate our faith life, and to reconfirm our commitment to Christ and His Church. My dear friends, confident in the Lord's love and mercy, and trusting in Him, we turn to Him and bring Him our prayers of petition today. Let us pray for all who are baptized in Christ. May the grace of baptism and our participation in the life of the sacraments strengthen our commitment to Christ and the Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who exercise leadership on a world, national, and local stage, may the power of the Holy Spirit guide them in their service to their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all in need of God's healing this day, especially those suffering from this current pandemic, may the hope of the resurrection bring them strength, and may God look graciously upon them in their need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, may the Holy Spirit continue to nourish us and help us bear the fruit of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our personal intentions, for those needs listed in our parish book of prayer, for all those who continue to support us during this time of difficulty, that we may bring our needs and their needs before the Lord today, and that he may answer them according to his will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For James Aldridge, on this the first anniversary of his death, for whom our Mass is offered today, and for all the souls of the faithful departed, 
that they who have died, marked the sign of faith, may come to share in the glory of Christ's resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, hear our prayer. We entrust these, our needs, to you, knowing that you will hear and answer them according to your holy will. Through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord has risen and shown his light upon us, whom he has redeemed by his blood. Alleluia. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring us your help in this present life and ensure us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks.